Hello, everybody. Sorry about take two. We're hoping that we won't have as many difficulties over here on this side of the building. Uh, if you will let us know if we're still intermittent or if the sound is bad, just to let us know, give us a thumbs up. That'll let us know if things are good or if they're bad. All right, we've got a couple people online. Let us know where you're from and who you are. We'll go ahead and give it just a few minutes and do a few quick shout outs to those that are joining us right now. Hopefully the sound has improved, uh, the quality is better, we're not as fuzzy as it was being said before and I apologize. If everything's good, give us a thumbs up if you can hear us. Thank you. All right, that's good. Okay, hi Vitor. <laughs> well, Vitor. Hey Vitor, give us a thumbs up if the sound is good. Can you hear us okay this week? Hi, Angelia. Good. Okay, we got some hearts. Hi, both. All right. Hi, L Larry. Picture's better. Sound is better. Thank you, Larry. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, <laughs> I'll Christine. I'll let you take over from me. All right. Well, let's <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of the uh, some of the reviews, some of the testimonials, some and then of the, you uh, can go back yeah, into what you were doing. Okay, go. this one came through, which I thought was kind of neat. This is cute. Tracy sends this to us says, our 11-year-old son had a sore back for a few days. He thought he had hurt it while bringing firewood inside. It hurt while lying down and while stretching. After, after a bit, I remember what Dave advises in the weekly video questions. I told him to hop on and just do the health bounce for a bit and any other moves that he was comfortable with. Lo and behold, he's pain-free again and is amazed at how it helped. Thank you, Dave. You know, another movement that's great is to lie them down. It takes two people to do this but to lie them down and actually do the gentle moving up and down, especially when the back has spasmed or if you have discomfiture in the back. But thank you for sharing that. Okay, so we've got some questions. Did you want right. to go into those questions really quick? Sure, and then let's we do can, it. Okay, uh, this one is about having a, using a larger trampoline. Mm -hmm. uh, it, the, the question's really long, so I'll kind of try and, and skim okay. it really quick. She ha Her daughter was a former gymnast. She has... Uh, went and used it for just a little bit and purchased a cellar sizer two weeks ago. She suffers from tinnitus, or severe tinnitus and vertigo, and sometimes those can flare up. But as you've mentioned before, the cellar sizer sometimes can bring out our weaknesses as we begin. Sure. But do you want to just to yeah. address yeah. this? Yeah, I've had most people that I know within a month of cellar sizing really don't have the symptoms of vertigo anymore. Now, if you're an exception, let us know. But I've been doing this for many, many years, and my own wife had vertigo too. And as long as she was cellar sizing, she enjoyed a quality of life and could do things that she wasn't able to do prior to that. It takes a little bit of time, but again, movement up and down is going to expose weaknesses. It's helpful at doing that, but it's also gonna help strengthen those areas of the body that might be weak. And the constant fluid movement past the stirrup, the smallest bone of our ear, and, and challenging of our proprioceptors, our balance, rhythm, timing, dexterity, hand-eye coordination, all of that is brought into play when we're doing different movements on the cellar sizer. And so we're challenging the body in a way the average person doesn't. And as we start to challenge it again, it starts to adapt to those challenges. And that's one of the great benefits of cellar size. All right, okay. I have an inflamed nevic navicular bone and surrounding area in my foot. I've continued to rebound, but I'm still having a lot of swelling in my ankle and calf. Can I continue or should I rest? That's a good question. And because it's a medical condition, I'm obligated to say consult with your doctor or have your doctor feel free to give me a call. You can also share some of the different movements that we do on the cellar sizer with your doctor. Now, that being said, was it caused from a fracture or an injury or is it caused from just extra cartilage or a bone fragment that's in that area of the body? One of the advantages, again, of cellar size is it doesn't have a jarring impact. And so movement up and down where you're lifting the heel up and down is going to target and work on those areas of the foot. Over a period of time, it can help strengthen it. And if, you're, if it's a fracture, staying flat-footed and gently bouncing up and down at, with your knees but keeping the foot flat can help increase circulation, reduce inflammation, and promote the healing process. Again, consult with your doctor, but we've seen, including my own, a tremendous results for people that have had broken bones and ankle problems and foot problems. So um, there's, there's a lot of advantages to cellar size. I've even, when I broke my ankle in a couple places, held my broken ankle or foot over the side of the cellar size, or I had my crutch, 
and I was bouncing up and down with one foot over the side. The movement up and down increased circulation, helped reduce the inflammation, promoted very quick healing. In fact, the doctors were so impressed with how fast that I healed, they ended up becoming my customers. They now use cellular sizers as well. So, All right. Good. Okay. Would you recommend to cellular size for someone with scoliosis? Well, we've talked about that, uh, what was it? In the week 12. Week 12. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, if, 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 again, medical conditions, consult with your doctor. I don't know how extreme or what your particular situation is, but there are things that we can do, such as taking the elbow, sticking it up over our head, stretching and opening up the vertebral joints in the back, loosening up those muscles, holding the position, and then gently moving up and down so that we can take and, and open up the vertebral joints, increase circulation, promote faster healing. When you're working with a chiropractor and they make the alignment adjustment, if it's appropriate, standing on the cellar sizer and gently bouncing up and down helps the muscles flex around the new alignment. It expedites the whole healing process. And we get a lot of chiropractors who are now part of our program as well. It's an adjunct to what they do because they don't have time to work on all the muscles like the cellar sizer can. The cellar sizer is that you are weightless, weight, weightless over 100 times a minute. And not only are the muscles flexing, but all the fascia surrounding all of the, the entire skeletal system it, and, and internal organs, it's also expanding and contracting. So it has a competitive advantage over many of the traditional ways that people might otherwise um, work on some of those issues. All right. What were you to say to someone who says the spring patent is a marketing ploy? <laughs> oh, I left it out on the couch. We'll go get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, it's not. Um, and as a matter of fact, it is a literal patent and that technology allows the body whether or a person whether they're 300 pounds or 30 pounds they're going to utilize that portion of the spring they need based upon their weight or how high they're jumping so it's um, the tridaptable spring design is the only spring design of its kind that utilizes that technology to to help a person adapt and 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 get the get those benefits and there it is. So it's um, just appreciate. It. Just so you know, it is a it is a literal patent design. It's not uh, it's not fluff. It's why people, when they jump on the solar sizer, can feel the difference, and experience the results, the different results um, that the solar sizer has to offer. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any good exercise on the cellar sizer for osteoarthritis in both feet? Well, again, any movement up and down is going to cause osteoblastic activity um, because it's weight bearing, but without the jarring. And cellar size has the advantage of being not just weight bearing, but also increasing circulation. So that osteoblastic activity through the weight will cause the bones to utilize more mineral content but without jarring or hurting it. and the movement up and down will help to feed more circulation through the joints um, through the movement up and down on the cellar sizer without having to hit a hard surface all right that's yeah. all the questions that we've got for tonight so this will allow okay. you to get right into all what right. we started out with we're going to do it all over again and okay. it'll be great <laughs> so thank you i'm going to turn it over to you thank you our objective here is to help you get results and sometimes in that process people can get a little frustrated what I'd like to do tonight is talk a little bit about inspiring you for those of you who are challenged a little bit and, and let you know that this is a journey and it's wonderful. It becomes part of our day-to-day -day life and experience. Our objective isn't the end result our, and it shouldn't be because if our objective was simply the end result, then the journey toward that result can become discouraging and frustrating. So the journey toward the end result, it's the journey that we need to ex accept, appreciate, and enjoy. And, and a big part of that starts with appreciating yourself for who you are right now. It's been a prayer in my heart for many years, and, and so, several of you have probably heard me say it before, but that that God would guide and direct me in my world, activities, and affairs. 
the thoughts and the desires of my heart. Help me see things not as men do, but as you want me to. Help me to become the person you most want me to be. Lift me up so that I can lift up others and help me that I can be a servant among my brothers and sisters and helping them to reach their greater physical, mental, spiritual, and emotional health. Paul J. Meyer has been and was a, a, a very strong uh, influence on my life uh, when I was growing up. And he made a comment that has always stuck with me. Whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe, and enthusiastically act upon, must inevitably come to pass. I call that faith. The ability to see things, not as they are, but as they can become. Can you see yourself not as you are, but as you can become? Or do you get frustrated with where you are right now? Because if you're frustrated with where you are right now, then chances are when you get to the objective, you're going to find something else to be frustrated about once you hit that. We need to learn to love and appreciate ourselves for who we are right now, not for where we're going to be in the future. Because whether we ever get there or not, the character of the person we are becoming in the process of achieving it defines the person we are and the person we're also going to hopefully become. I've often said in order to have what we have not, we must first become what we are not. As we become what we are not, then what we have not becomes the natural manifestation of the person we've now become. But in order to become what we are not, we must first be able to see ourselves, each other, that which is around us and that which is within us, not just as we are today, but as we can become tomorrow, which is the way I pray God sees each one of us. You see, the moment we see ourselves not just as we are, but as we can become in our physical and our health, our family and our home, our financial and our career, our social and cultural, spiritual, ethical, and mental educational areas of our life. Once we see ourselves, not as we are, but as we can become, we then become a person of vision. And I want the seller size family to be people of vision. See, when you become a person of vision and you hold on to the vision, the ability to see things not as they are, but as they can become, the first step of faith, you hold on to the vision, it grows into a desire. Now, as you nurture the desire, that's, that's the exercise of faith. You nurture the desire with prayer, meditation, affirmation, proclamation, declaration. The desire becomes a passion. The passion compels us to action, and the action creates an end result. And I ask people, where does it all begin? It begins with the vision. Ideas affect the way we think. The way we think affects the way we act. The way we act to a large degree is going to determine our results. So if we want to take charge of our results, we have to be willing to take charge of the ideas that we are allowing ourselves to be exposed to on a day-to-day -day basis. Because if we don't, then by default, the ideas, whether they're old or whether they're influences around us, those ideas begin to take charge of us. And most people, as a result of that, live in a reactive mode they're constantly allowing the conditions around them to far too often govern the conditions within them. I want you to be empowered. I want you to see yourself not as you are, but as you can become. And I want you to believe you're going to achieve that. But I want you to enjoy the process on the way. The closest relationship you're ever going to have with any body is your own body. How do you feel about it? You need to feel good about it. We need to start by feeling good about who we are right now today and take the steps. If you don't, that's okay. If you don't, start looking at yourself in the mirror and look eye to eye and say, hey, every day, in every way, I'm getting better and better. See, a year from now is going to pass by. It will for all of us. What we choose to do between now and that year is going to play a huge part in the person we're going to become. When I was a, when I was a young boy um, or younger, I came up with a story. I'd like to share that story with you because it illustrates something that 
has made a huge difference in my life. And if I can share that with you and it helps you in any way, then, then that, this will be a successful meeting. But it starts off, there's these two young men, they're standing in front of the school on a beautiful sunny day. They've just finished the first week of high school. Puffy white clouds intersperse a blue, blue sky. They're standing there waiting for the bus to pick them up. Off into the distance, you can see Catalina Island. It's a beautiful day. And as they're standing there waiting for that bus, they're talking about their first week of high school. The teachers they have, the students they've met, the assignments they've received. And as they're talking, Joe Jock drives by in a brand new red convertible Corvette. He's got the top down, he's got a letterman's jacket on, he's got some medals glistening in the sun, he's got a cheerleader wrapped around his neck and a great big Cheshire grin on his face. And as he drives by, he sees his peers and he waves to them and they all wave back and they cheer because Joe Jock's everyone's hero. He's the captain of the football team, he's their all-star quarterback. Besides, he's a likable guy. Well, our two friends are watching this and one of them's named Darn, I wish I had. And the other's named, gee, I'm glad I did. Well, darn, I wish I had looks over at Joe Jock. He looks at that car. He looks at that letter and those medals and that girl and that grin. And he says, darn, I wish I had that. Well, gee, I'm glad I did looks over at Joe Jock. He looks at that card, that letter, those medals, that girl, that grin. And he looks back at darn, I wish I had. And he says, you know, darn, they're on a first name basis now. He says, you know, darn, if Joe Jock can do it, so can we. And Darn looks at G in utter dismay and he says, what? <laughs> are, are you nuts? Have you seen how that guy is packaged? I mean, he's got it all. He's got the car. He's got the letter. He's got the medals. He's got the girl. He's got the brawn. How are we going to do that? And G thinks for a moment, looks back at Darn. He says, well, you know, Darn, he didn't always have that. He had to work for it. What? We're both fast runners. We can go out for the track team. And there's a restaurant opening up down the street. They're going to be needing dishwashers. Why, in no time at all, we can be driving around with our own car, with our own letter on our own chest. And Darn looks at Gene and says, hello, hello, you can't do that. You don't have the time. You've got homework. You've got assignments. You've got chores. You have to do your piano practice. And besides, Star Trek comes on every night at 5 o'clock and you'd miss it. But you see, She's not listening to Darn. G's thinking in terms of the person that he wants to become in order to achieve the things that are important to him in his life right now. So he goes out and he gets that job as a dishwasher. And he becomes the very best dishwasher they have. He puts his homework in these plastic envelopes, puts them on the cork board, and wipes the steam off every now and then as he's taking the dishes out. And he does very well in school. He goes out for the track team. It's his first day out on the field. He's decided he wants to become a pole vaulter. Yeah. He's holding this long steel tube looking down this, or pole, looking down this long, narrow asphalt runway, at the very end of which there is a steel box. He needs to pick up that pole, run down that runway, plant the end of the pole into the box, jump up in the air and land on the pit on the other side. And at 129 pounds of determination, he picks up that pole and he starts to run down that runway. And he runs faster and faster and faster. He gets to the end, he plants that pole, he starts on up and he stops right about here, the pits on the other side. He's not a physics expert, but he realizes holding on to that pole for dear life, as he heads back down toward that asphalt runway, he's going to hit the ground. And he does. And he rolls a couple times. He picks himself up. He dusts himself off. He picks that pole back up, heads right back down that runway because one thing that G knows even this early in his life is that persistence overcomes resistance. So he gets back down there to the end of the runway. His freshman year goes by. His sophomore year goes by. His junior year goes by. He's now a senior at the Freeway CIF League Championships. He's holding a long 13 and a half foot fiberglass catapult looking much further down that runway than he had just a few years before at a bar whose height he'd only previously visualized going over. And at 175 pounds of steel determination, he picks up that pole 
and he starts to run down that runway. And he runs faster and faster and faster. He gets to the end, he plans that pole. That pole bends. He starts on up, he sees a bar. He pulls his hips up over the bar. He's on his way back down. The bar's still there. He hits a pit. He's done it. First place, CIF Freeway League Championships. Well, we find the year fast coming to a close. And darn, I wish I had, is standing in front of the school waiting for a ride. He's graduated from the bus scene. He's waiting for a friend to pick him up. And as he's standing there, contemplating his high school career, gee, I'm glad I did, drives by in a brand newly painted Triumph TR4A IRS, independent rear suspension. He's got the top down. He's got a letterman's jacket on. He's got some metals glistening in the sun and he's got a girl wrapped around his neck. And as he drives by, he sees Darn and waves to him. And Darn waves back because they're both still good friends. And Darn looks at G. He looks at that car. He looks at those medals and that letter and that girl. And he says to himself one last time, his high school career, Darn, I wish I had. When I talk to you in terms of family, I really mean that. I don't want you to get discouraged. A year is going to go by. Two years are going to go by. Three years are going to go by. The choices that you are making today has a lot to do with the person you're going to become tomorrow. There was a poem that I cut out of a magazine when I was in fourth grade. It, many of you may have heard it. It goes, if you think you can, you can. If you think you dare not, you don't. If you'd like to win but you think you can't, it's almost certain you won't. If you think you will lose, you've lost. For out in the world you'll find success begins with the fellow's will. It's all in the state of the mind. If you think you're outclassed, you are. You've got to think high to rise. You've got to be sure of yourself before you can ever win a prize. Life's battles don't always go to the stronger or faster man. But sooner or later, the one who wins is the one who thinks they can. Success is the progressive realization of predetermined, personal, and worthwhile goals. It's not a destination. It is the progressive realization of predetermined, personal, worthwhile goals. What's important to you? When I've often talked about achieving a goal or an objective, I ask people what that might be. Now, for some people, it may be weight loss. For other people, it may be an addiction. For other people, it may be a health issue or a cancer, which is a health issue. Whatever, or a relationship. Whatever the issue is, I'm going to share with you something that's profound that I really believe in. And I'm going to tell you why I believe it. And you may not all agree with it, and that's okay. But what I've said for years is, why fight against that which is wrong when instead you can promote that which is right? When we fight against that which is wrong, whether it's cancer, whether it's uh, an addiction, or whether it's a relationship, or what, work related, whatever the case may be, when we fight against what's wrong, have you noticed how people become in the process of fighting against it? They become fearful and anxious. Put it another way. Pretend there's a dark room and you walk into this dark room, which is very, very dark. You don't like the darkness. And that darkness could represent any one of these issues I was talking about. So you, you stand there in this dark room and you're fighting against the darkness. <laughs> when you're done fighting, it's still going to be dark. But the difference is the character of the person that you have become in the process of fighting against it. You deal in fear and anxiety and frustration and despair and all these negative energies that lower your level of energy. When we contend against that which we think is wrong, I mean, look at churches today, look at our economy today, look at our, our, our government and, our, uh, and, and the media. Look what they're doing to, to encourage contention and division. And look at the people that are falling into it and the results that it's having in, the, in our overall health. 
as a nation, and as individuals. I don't want that to be you. See, when you walk into that dark room and you're fighting against the darkness, I want you to realize that over on the wall, for all of us, there's a light switch. Now, for most of us, it's a dimmer switch. As you turn on the light and then you begin to turn up the light, what happens to the darkness automatically? It fades away. It can't exist within the light. And as you turn up the light, you begin to see obstacles in the room that maybe you couldn't see before. And therefore, your ability to move around them, over them, through them, under them, whatever, to get to the goal or objective becomes easier. In our life, rather than fight against that which is wrong, I suggest you promote that which is right. If you want to lose weight, we'll just use this as an example. Rather than fight against the fact that you want to, you're trying to get rid of the weight, embrace yourself and love yourself literally right where you are right now and tell yourself that, even if you're uncomfortable with it to begin with. Because as you do that, your self-esteem, your love for yourself, your energy, your desire, your vision, your passion, it will increase. And feeling good about yourself will empower you to continue to reach that goal or objective and find the ways that you can achieve to do it. It's not that conditions around us may ever change. It's the conditions within us that change so that we can reach those things that are important to us. So I share that with you tonight so that you will hopefully apply the positive aspects of enjoying the journey, realizing your greater health potential, promoting that which is right instead of fighting against that which is wrong. If you're dealing with cancer or any other issue that might be health-related, there are many techniques, but it starts with the vision, the ability to see yourself not as you are, but as you can become. And in those areas, if you're dealing with cancer, visualize that area being filled with light. Literally communicate with the body. Empower those white blood cells in your body as nice and shining armor and connect with the body. Thank the body for helping those knights in shining armor, those white blood cells with lances that are going after whatever the negative condition in your body might be and destroying it. But visualize light. Visualize the light. Are there questions that have come up that I can share? Um, we had one that came in about, um, they just, let's see, it says, I had my gallbladder removed this past Friday, and they said restricted activities four to six weeks. Do you have any recommendations what the, cell, what the sellers, for, for the seller size or for them? How soon can I get back on there safely? And that's a great question. And again, I'm obligated, as you know, to say consult with your doctor, but it's not typical exercise. Standing on a cellar site, when they're talking about exercise, they're talking about strenuous activities that may involve ballistic impact or pounding. On a cellar size, stand, cellar size or standing there and simply lifting the heels up and down. It works the calf muscle. It helps feed circulation. It massages. It helps reduce inflammation. It can help promote the healing process. And as I mentioned before, doctors know bones and muscles heal faster and grow stronger when exposed to some stress. That's the idea behind the walking cast. Well, the body in, in physical therapy, very shortly after um, surgeries, they often will be doing movements. Cellar size is a movement. You don't go crazy on it. There's many different approaches that you can take on a cellar sizer. You might want to share some of those with a doctor and ask them which approaches might be more, most beneficial to you. One of the ones that I share with uh, doctors and chiropractors is just gently standing there with both feet on the mat, knees slightly bent, and rocking side to side. 
uh, lifting the heels up and down is another one. I wouldn't do any twisting or things like this because the body is still healing. But the increase of circulation can help in that process. Anything else, Christine? That's pretty much it. Okay. Thank you. Um, next week, we'll be talking more about the solar size. I hope to have some good news on the app. Um, irrespective, I want, I want you to know we care about you. Uh, we really do. And if you have any frustrations, if, if you are having challenges and, and you need a hand up, you know, give us a call. You have a great health potential on many different levels. And we hope that we can help you to achieve it. Thank you very much.